Let's talk about um, let's talk about pre-contest preparation, and I, I'm going to tie this also into your clients that don't compete. This we're going to make we're going to make it applicable to them too. Okay. So when do you think this time to start preparing for a competition is? First question. Twelve weeks out. What did you say? Now. Now. Depends on what shape the person's in. Depends on what shape they're in. What their current plan is. Boom! There's a winner right there. As soon as they finish their last competition. Now, what this doesn't mean is that they continue eating bland food and they kill their self-training, but they have to be mindful of what they do after a contest because their body is in a physiological state that is ready to suck in a lot of what? Nutrients. Nutrients and what have they done? You Think about it this way too. You have pushed and pushed and pushed your body to burn body fat. Very, your body didn't, doesn't like that. It doesn't like to be that lean. That's not homeostasis. So what's <laughs> going to happen now if you go into this massive, massive caloric surplus? Uh, what, what's going to happen to your fat cells? What are they going to do? Explode. Multiply. Multiply and get bigger. Now, <clears throat> the crazier you go, the worse this is going to be, and you're going to make it harder on yourself the next competition. So, first of all, after a contest, you just have to understand the state that you're in. You're in a very good state to absorb nutrients, but you're also in a kind of a delicate state because now your body's going to say, I remember when you starved me the last time, this time I'm going to hang on to this fat. And all these extra calories you're giving me, I'm going to hang on tight to it. And what happens is people think there's a linear relationship between how many calories they eat and how fast they can grow muscle. So, if I finish my diet at 2,500 calories, then 3,500 calories I can grow at a certain speed. If I eat 4,500 calories, I can continue to grow. And if I eat 5,500 calories, I can continue to grow. That is not how your body works. You can only grow muscle so fast. Once you go beyond that, you're going to just start storing body fat. You're going to actually have, you're going to actually develop new fat cells, and the fat cells you already have are actually going to get larger. So you're going to be really careful. So you have to be careful about the changes you make calorically. Now, <clears throat> I have um, the structure that I use after a contest is a four-week structure. So post-contest, we have four weeks that we need to be, four weeks, uh, I, and I call this a phase. And what I like to do is increase calories very systematically. And for males, I like to increase it, uh, generally I'm going to say 500, that's pretty aggressive. And for females, I'm going to say 200 calories. Now what I mean by that is, if you're at 2,500 calories a day, then I'm just going to make it 3,000 a day if you're a male. If you're a female and you finish at 1,300 calories, I'm going to make it 1,500 calories. The important thing is, is at the end of the week, you stop and you say, okay, what happened this week? You look at your body. Do I look better? Do I look worse? You know, it's okay to gain a little bit of fat. That's normal. You're going to start gaining some fat back. That's a normal process. But, you know, did your body composition go to hell? And, you know, there's people that compete and two weeks later you can't even tell they dieted because they've just went overboard. And that's not what we want. So the important thing is before you determine what you do the second week, what did the change you make the first week produce? Hopefully, you have fuller muscles, bigger muscles, your, your strength is good, you're starting to get some energy back. Because remember, you just beat yourself into the ground pre-contest. Pre Probably got a little watery tension, a little, little bit's okay, you got a little bit of fat gain, that's okay. A little bit of fat gain at this point is healthy. You just don't want to go nuts. So what I typically tell people is they compete on, say, a Saturday. Enjoy yourself Saturday night, enjoy yourself Sunday, and then Monday we'll get back on a plan. Now the difference is, the actual plan, I'm not nearly as concerned about the type of macronutrients. This is where I'm very flexible. So if somebody's been eating chicken and brown rice, um, you know, I may have them eat, you know, they, they may get, uh, 
you know, fi a Greek yogurt for the protein with some berries in it. Maybe, you know, your food choices, I want it to be stuff that tastes good, that I don't want you to feel like you're continuing to diet. I want there to be a mental break as well. So this is where cereals comes into play sometimes for your post-workout carbohydrates. So your food choices, very flexible, enjoy yourself. Just don't get out of control. And if you're giving yourself a little bit of flexibility, you really shouldn't get out of control. Okay, <clears throat> so let's say you like what you saw at the end of the first week. Then you can simply repeat it the next week. All right, I'm gonna take my calories up again, 500. If I'm a female, I'm gonna go up again, 200. See what I'm getting at? It's a very systematic process to make sure you, you, know, you don't go overboard. Because you, you will produce, you will, you will gain fat incredibly fast post contest, and basically, you just keep adding calories until you think, I, okay, I'm good, I'm cool, I don't need to add any more. Then, or you may say that was a little too much, and then next week you might pull back. You might say, you know what, I'm going to pull this back 250, or I'm going to pull this back 100. Just make a decision based on your evaluation that you have at the end of the week. This is very important for those of you who have clients that compete that you do this with your clients. Give them some accountability. Make sure in that first four weeks they don't binge and go nuts because they will pay for it for their next show. Especially people who distribute body fat unevenly. So males that carry a lot of body fat in their kidneys. Females, you may let's say you're carrying it in your hips. Those areas will get fat very, very quickly when, you, when your body fat distribution pattern is uneven. And then, you know, what, you know how hard it is to get it off in the first place. Now you've just made it even harder. So, and I always, I always really worry about people that have uneven body fat distribution because if you make that worse, it's frustrating because in order to get those areas down, you, you often compromise your strong points. So let's say you have a female that has nice, full, round shoulders, a nice V taper to her body, but maybe she carries most of her body fat in one area on her legs, and you pound her and pound her and pound her in her legs, and finally her legs come in, but now she's lost a lot of fullness in her shoulders, her lats are smaller, and now her shape is worse. So be very, very careful with people who distribute body fat unevenly. Okay, yes? Um, I used to on topic, but you, do you, like, personally live by, like, if you've got, so you've got more body fat in the legs, so like, sort of spot reduction at all, or is it just for you, just, body fat as a whole? You know, I, t I look at it a couple different ways. My first instinct is, is yes, because when I look at athletes, like, if you look at tennis players, they'll have, like, the, the arm that they use predominantly is much more muscular than the other arm, but it's so much of it is genetic. Um, if you look at families, You'll see like three sisters that carry body fat the same way. If you look at guys, three brothers that carry body fat the same way. You can only fight genetics to a certain degree. And I think it's crazy to just dismiss genetics and say it doesn't matter because it does matter. So training wise, lower volume, frequency, and intensity. I still want them in the gym though because now they're in a caloric surplus. They, they, they can, uh, their body will be able to absorb uh, food a little better, their carbohydrate sensitivities will be better. So it is an opportunity to grow muscle. I just think people overblow it and think that you can grow like this unlimited amount of muscle. Okay, so I still want them in the gym. After the end of this four weeks, and by the way, this is just general. If your client says I can only do this for three weeks and then I'm going on vacation, hey, that's fine. I'm just giving you just kind of a general structure to follow. At the end of that four weeks, actually weeks five and six, I don't even want them to think about being in the gym. I don't want them to think about eating. I just want them to relax. And it's, it's the old adage, take one step back to take two forward. This is when they mentally start to recharge. If, you know, have them do something fun. You know, if they like to, I don't know, if they like to drag race, send them to the drag strip. Just have them do things that they like, they enjoy, that's fun. I like to do a lot of things with my family, so I'll, sp I'll spend these two weeks doing just tons of stuff with my family, all day long, as much as I can, as much as my kids are out of school, okay? Then, that's, so this is, 
This is what I would call kind of your phase one.